Oh, yes. Uh, yes, that is my prayer that God will make me a blessing. And I believe you may want to pray that prayer too. In fact, I know many of you are praying that prayer today. Also, not just to be blessed, but to be a blessing. And today we're going to be blessed here in our Bible study as we get into this amazing topic of to serve and to save. That's our topic for today. And we have an incredible panel with us today that you're going to be blessed to hear. And also we want to hear from you. So please make sure to send your comments and your questions. We would just love to be in touch and hear what you have to say. Let's begin. In fact, some of you already started. Look at that. Uh, so Victoria, happy Sabbath to you. Good morning and happy Sabbath to you as well. And Dwight, thank you for sending your greeting. Everybody, we want you to send your greetings. In fact, why don't you do something right now that the panel here is about to do, which is to share your number one gratitude for today. What are you grateful for today? Uh, that, you know, that is a way to have a happy Sabbath. If you want to have, have a happy Sabbath, be grateful. You cannot be thankful and unhappy at the same time. So I'm going to begin by sharing. I'm grateful. I'm grateful for our church. I'm grateful for the opportunity that we've had over the past several weeks to be in tune with um, black history and just to celebrate God, God's goodness in, in the lives of African-Americans and Africans and people um, who call themselves black and so just praising god for the for for that blessing that we've had at our church as well and uh so today we were culminating this black history month and uh we're just excited to see what the lord is going to do so what are you grateful for today let's um let's have you meet our awesome panel and so here we have with us now marcia dentos welcome marcia well thank you good morning happy sabbath i'm thankful for life I'm thankful that the Lord wake me up this morning. I'm grateful for having great families and friends and my church family. I thank the Lord for his goodness and his mercies towards me. All right. All right. Thank you, Marcia. And it's so good to see you. I know you, you work in nursing and God has kept you safe. God uh, has kept me it, safe. I'm thankful mm. for that. All right. Very good. Now let me bring one of the elders from our church, uh, Stuart Bell. Dr. Bell, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Sabbath. Nice to be with you today and with all of you who are watching and listening online. Uh, my gratitude today is for especially the sense of hearing. You know, I woke up this, this week, a couple of days, and I heard outside in the garden or the trees, birds singing. Oh First time in a few months. So robins and cardinals. It was just a nice reminder of the change of season that's coming. So I'm grateful for the birds that sing in the morning. Mm, that's so true. The birds are happy that the ice is melting, right? Yes. Very good. Let's have uh, Eve. Welcome. So good to have you back on the panel. Good morning, Pastor Munoz and everyone on the panel and everyone that is listening and online. Welcome. Good morning. Happy Sabbath. And I am thankful for uh, the seasons as well, especially just enjoying the snow. 
uh, I know over the past week we've had some snow and some ice and it has just been wonderful to kind of be home and not to actually have to go out in the snow and the ice and just enjoy it falling. And then to see the beautiful sunshine. Um, I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful for sight. I'm thankful um, for health. I'm thankful just for Jesus and salvation and the Sabbath. Oh, wow. Praise thank God. You. Thank you for sharing. And thank you, everybody, for sending your greetings. Here's Hyacinth Jones, and she writes, I'm grateful for life. I'm grateful for the love of my family and most of all for health. Very good. So welcome, everybody. Uh, welcome, uh, Brother Kwasi. We see your greeting here. So um, here's the Seabrook Church family welcoming you to the family. So good to have you. So happy Sabbath indeed, everybody. And so good to see everybody. Welcome, welcome. Good to see you, beautiful people. And here is Hermina. She writes, I'm thankful for God opening my eyes to see the new day because someone didn't. Amen. So, and we pray for them. We pray for those who are sad today. Um, and we pray God's mercies on them. And we are thankful uh, that we can be a blessing here today. Very good. All right. So let's begin our awesome study for today. And Eve, would you pray for us? Sure. Bow your heads. Dear Father, we come into your presence today, thanking you once again for bringing us all together to, again to study your word. Make your word plain so that we may understand what you have intended for us. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Praise God. All right. So this is our topic for uh, the, for today. The, by the way, if you're new here, we do a Bible study throughout the week. And I'm going to tell you more about how you can get access to the online lessons that we do. Even in five minutes, you can read and really let God feed your soul. And so for this coming week, we'll, we'll post that uh, so that you have access to it. And um, this is a topic that we've been studying this week. And we get to review it here now to serve and to save. And uh, here's the scripture from Isaiah 42 and verse 1. In fact, if you can, right there at home where you are, uh, I want you to read it nice and loud with me right now, right from home. And it says, Behold my servant whom I uphold, my elect one in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the Gentiles. And I'll tell you what, I'm very glad for this scripture because I'm one of those Gentiles that is being blessed. This is a this prophecy mm -hmm. has been fulfilled. Um, absolutely in in my life and being fulfilled so um what we have is uh, basically that there are three main characters in isaiah chapters 41 to 45 and so let me show you that let me i'll try to put it on the screen uh for you uh let me see here i can do that so three main characters that we will be looking at um here today and the first one is the people. Um, the people of Israel are called a servant of God. Then there, there is this, in Isaiah, and we'll see today, there's this servant, unnamed, that um, we'll see fits Jesus Christ, the Messiah. In Isaiah, uh, it just it speaks of this servant, the servant of the Lord. And then it also mentions uh, the... Uh, the prophecy of this Persian king Cyrus, and we'll get into that. Uh, so this is just going to be uh, just a fascinating, fascinating study. Uh, interpreting the book of Isaiah, uh, just uh, incredible, incredible opportunity. So uh, let me, uh, well, we looked at the scripture already. So this servant is undoubtedly represents the people of God uh, at that time, Israel and Judah. That was the scripture that I had on the screen earlier, here it is again, Isaiah 42, and uh, brother, it's this one right here. This is Isaiah 41, verses eight and nine. Let me read it for us real quick. It says, but you, Israel, are my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen, the descendants of Abraham, my friend, you whom I have taken from the ends of the earth and called from the farthest regions and said to you, now this is beautiful, pay attention, you are my servant. I have chosen you and have not cast you away. Someone needed to hear that today. I needed to hear that today. Yes. And so uh, this servant undoubtedly represents the people of God. At that time, Israel and Judah. But how about today? 
it represents you and me and uh now um i want to now turn it over to uh i'm gonna turn it over to marcia who's going to share with us a bit more about this a servant people or servant nation yes um a servant people and servant nation isaiah speak of a servant nation breaking it down into two levels the corporate level and the spiritual level jerusalem oh sorry um israel was the choosing nation called to serve god in that period of time but in our time he's speaking about a spiritual israel whosoever received the lord in their life is called to serve serve the lord with gladness serve him with the right attitude serve him on a personal level and serve him exclusively god and god only and serve him through humanity the service that you render through humanity serve him also in that aspect god gave israel one of the most magnificent promises in the bible do not fear i am your god i will help you and i will strengthen you i will uphold you with my righteous right hand and it's also the promise he's given us today only if we trust him and keep the faith i like joshua 24 15 that say but as for me and my house we will serve the lord and i want to take notice on isaiah 41 14 where the lord is calling the nation a worm and i like to turn that over to brother bell as he can elaborate a little bit on this aspect oh wow much yeah thank you a uh, worm that's that's some strong language um and you make a point here where this is a situation where israel is helpless they are in need of help and that's why god says in two verses back to back isaiah 41 13 and 14 he says it twice he says fear not i will help you and he says again fear not i will help you when you think of a worm a worm is insignificant you step on them all the time you don't even notice them um they are helpless no arms no legs they crawl around it's difficult for them to do what they need to do and so in humility we need to turn to god to christ to help us but here's the other part about being a worm which is good news is that when you think about we learned this back in in elementary school kindergarten think about the butterfly and the life cycle the worm the caterpillar is just but one stage in the process of maturing into a butterfly. And so when God says you are a worm, he's essentially saying you are not there yet. You have a little ways to go. I need to work with you to transform you into what you need to be, what I want you to be. So God isn't finished with us yet. He wasn't finished with Israel yet. There was a moment and opportunity for transformation and healing and reconciliation. So a worm represents a state of humility and helplessness because God is going to step in to do the rest for us. And we know that he who began a good work in us is able to complete that. So it's good news. It's good news. There is yet transformation to happen for us. Good. And in fact, let me just continue and, and say, you know, you make a good point. Then the text says, um, I will help you, says the Lord, and your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. It seems as though there's an introduction here to another character. Who is this Holy One of Israel who is going to help us, who is going to transform us into what we need to be? Who is this servant and what is his mission? You know, when you think about introducing someone uh, or if someone is introducing you, you want to be sure that you are communicating about that person things that are true, okay? things that are of value and that have meaning for those who are listening, the persons, uh, the people who are, are being introduced. Um, and you want to make sure that these, the, these points you're making are unique about that individual so they stand out. And in our lesson, we have several texts in Isaiah 42 that introduce the unique, valuable, true characteristics 
of this individual, this person, this Messiah, this Redeemer. Uh, we see in Isaiah 42, verse 1, he brings justice to the Gentiles. Uh, in 42, verses 2 through 4, he fulfills his goals with silence and meekness. We continue on down to verses 5 and 6. He acts as a covenant between God and his people. So we're introducing someone, true, valuable, unique, standout characteristics of this individual. He brings light and hope to heal the blindness and to free the prisoners. That is all transformative. And so this servant does a similar work to that of the rod of the stem of Jesse hmm. and the promised son. It seems, therefore, that this individual, this servant, is the Messiah, Jesus of Nazareth. And if we look at Isaiah 42, 1 to 4, we see some things that uh, he does. He brings truth to the Gentiles. He reaches out, and his spirit, God's spirit, is on him. A bruised reed he will not break, uh, bring forth justice. So he's doing an important work of transformation. Okay? Now, the question is, um, he is our Redeemer and our Lord. He is our Savior. There's a question you want to ask, and, and feel free, uh, those of you who are watching uh, online, YouTube, Facebook, listening. Why do you believe that Jesus, this Jesus, this person we just introduced, is your Savior, is your Redeemer? Why do you believe that to be the case? Before I ask Marcia to answer this question, for me, you know, um, what's written and what's said about this individual, Jesus of Nazareth, is not written, is not written about anyone else in history. Uh, in fact, I don't have a record of anyone in my family or any friends dying for me. There's only one record of someone who died in my place. And what's said of him, what's recorded about him, is not recorded about anyone else. There can only be that one person for me in my life who is my Savior and Redeemer, because no one else matches that description. Nobody else has that quality of introduction. Marcia, share with us, why do you believe that Jesus is your Savior? And as you do that, others who are listening, type in the chat why you believe Jesus is your Savior. Marcia? Yes. He is my Savior because he loved me so much. He loved me with an unconditional love that he died for me. Mm -hmm. he, came to, uh, he came and died for me so I will not perish. So I would have life and have life in a more abundant way. Yes, yes, yes. he's my savior, he's my redeemer, he's my friend, he's all for me. And, and, as, you, and as you rightly said, uh, which is your commitment to him, as for you and your house, you will, you will serve Lord the, Lord. the Lord. All right, yeah. amen. Okay, I think, Pastor Munch, we have another character we need to introduce this morning. All right, very good. So thank you so much, each one, for sharing. Thank you, people, for sending your answers. It's so powerful. And so as we, as we move through our study, um, we get to uh, Isaiah chapter 45. And speaking of a Persian uh, king here, a liberator messiah, Eve, why don't you take this for us? Absolutely. Um, so as we talk about the third person uh, in this prophecy, we are drawn to the person of Cyrus, the king of Persia. And Cyrus has been compared to Christ in so many levels. Um, the verse actually begins talking about how Cyrus um, liberates and Cyrus is the anointed one. So what I've done for the next few minutes is that I have actually uh, created a parallel slide to really highlight some of the characteristics between Cyrus and Christ, who is the Messiah. So on your screen, you should actually see um, this liberator Messiah. Um, on the left, we have Cyrus, the king of Persia, and what scripture says about him. And we have Christ, who is the son of God, our Messiah and what scripture talks um, about him. And I wanna go through some of these points and I've listed this, the scripture for you um, because we won't have time to go through all of these. But I think it, it's just very telling um, that Cyrus and Christ are compared so well throughout the scripture. Uh, just like Christ was anointed for his ministry, 
Cyrus was also anointed in his ministry, Isaiah 45, one. Christ is called, our sh he is our shepherd, um, both in John, but also in Psalms 23. Christ is also, sorry, Cyrus is also called a shepherd to lead people out of bondage, Isaiah 44. Uh, Cyrus is responsible for drying up the Euphrates so that um, uh, he can actually go into Babylon to liberate Israel. Um, if we look at the prophecy of the um, seven vials, we see that Christ also dries up the Euphrates to return for us in Revelation 16 2. Cyrus unlocks the gates of Babylon. One of the reasons why um, Babylon was impenetrable is because the, uh, the river had to be dried up and then someone actually had to unlock the gates under the city where the river flowed. Well, someone left the gates open in Babylon, which as soon as Cyrus actually rolled into the uh, riverbed after he dried it up, he was able to go in to uh, Babylon unheeded. The same way, Christ descended into hell. He descended into the grave and was able to unlock the gates of hell with his keys. That's found in Revelation 118. Cyrus is responsible for subduing all of the nations. We know that Media Persia was the second worldwide kingdom. Um, Christ conquers all of the earthly nations when he comes again and, and actually did uh, with the death of the cross, Revelation 19. Cyrus calls Israel out of Babylon. He actually tells Israel to go back to Jerusalem and rebuild in Ezra. Christ calls us spiritual Israel out of Babylon in Revelation 14, 8. Cyrus delivers Israel from bondage in, in Ezra by loosing them from uh, uh, Babylonian captivity. And Christ delivers us from spiritual bondage, Luke 14, 18. Cyrus actually fulfills the 70 year prophecy talked about in Daniel and through the prophets of Jeremiah in 2 Chronicles. Christ fulfills the 70 week prophecy that we talk about in Daniel 9 24. Christ is a Messianic king. And when we talk about anointed, what does it mean to be anointed? That word in Hebrew, anointed, means Messiah. So Christ. So Cyrus actually is the Messianic king that actually delivers Israel out of Babylonian bondage. And so Christ also is crowned our Messianic king, king of kings, lord of lords. In fact, the week before he died, he actually rode through Jerusalem in John 12, 13, and, and uh, Israelites and everyone in Jerusalem praised him. Christ restores our temple. Christ I mean, sorry, Cyrus restores the temple and the sanctuary service in Ezra. Christ restores the heavenly sanctuary service as stated in Hebrews 8.2. And then Isaiah, Jeremiah prophesied about Cyrus coming on the scene to liberate Israel, as well as the whole entire Bible really talks about Christ and the work that he is doing in saving us from our sins and how he's going to return to take us home with him. And I found that it was very interesting to note on this slide, and I listed at the bottom, that one of the reasons why Israel found itself in captivity in the first place were two interesting things. And these are repeated throughout um, Isaiah. They're also repeated through Jeremiah um, and also listed in Chronicles, that Israel had a problem with social injustice. Uh, being able to uh, defend the orphan and the fatherless. Uh, Israel's judges were taking bribes, they were worshiping idols, and they were profaning the Sabbath. And it's very interesting that we see those kind of same things playing out in Revelation as well. In the second slide, we're talking about uh, a question. And that question is, do you believe that prophets receive predictions from God? So we Isaiah and Jeremiah all have predicted Cyrus coming on the scene, Cyrus as the liberator Messiah, Cyrus, Cyrus who was going to deliver the Israelites. And I just listed a couple of texts here um, that are scriptural based. God always reveals his plans. In Amos 3, 7, he says he will do nothing but reveal his secrets um, and his plans to the servants, the prophets. Um, 
in the last days, we are called to prophesy. Um, in Joel 2, 28, our sons and daughters will prophesy. In 2 Corinthians, um, it's mentioned that prophecy is a superior gift. So here's a question. And please uh, answer this question in the chat for those that are on Facebook and online. What do prophets do? And Amos gives us a sneak peek into what prophets do. If you think about all of the prophets, David, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Micah, Haggai, all of them are called to speak the word, the word of God. And that's all what prophets do. So when we talk, when we think about what is our role as a church and as a people in the last days, we are supposed to speak, thus saith the Lord. So what is prophecy? Second Peter 1.20 tells us, and please answer what, what prophecy is in the chat. Prophecy is the word of God. We are called to speak the word of God. And so we are called to walk by faith and not by sight. And one of the things that I uh, realized uh, in the last couple of weeks is that we always doubt what we don't know. And so we are called to read the word, digest the word, memorize the word so that we can be grounded in the word of truth. So that when people come to try to dissuade us, we are standing firmly on the promises of God. We can believe his prophecy and his predictions to be true. And for that, I am going to turn it back to Pastor Munoz. Wow, Eve, as you can see right there in the chat, people are really excited to see the comparison between Cyrus and Jesus. Uh, just fascinating, fascinating. Uh, and if this is all new to you, Isaiah is a deep book and it calls for definitely for deep study. Um, so thank you for thank you for the hard work you put into this study uh, to share. People are very excited in the chat if you can see uh, there, Eve. Uh, very good. So. Um, so Stuart now, can add actually something here as yeah, well. Go ahead. Oh, you said Stuart. Okay. Yes. Sure. Yeah, no, I think that's I think that's powerful. Um, and the, the good news, the good news is that God doesn't do anything unless He tells us. So we are an informed people. We know what's coming. He that's the way He operates. And uh, to add to your list of texts, Eve, uh, there's a text I love. I've come to to love it. Revelation twenty two and verse six. It's actually become a prayer of mine. And um, this is Jesus talking to John the Revelator when he's on the Isle of Patmos. And he said, then he said to me, these words are faithful and true. And the words of God are faithful and true. And the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel to show his servants the things which must shortly take place. Amen. And so God is going to show us the things that must shortly take place. So if you are listening and you have a decision to make, you have made plans and you're not sure if they're going to be fulfilled. Or is it going to happen? I don't know what's going to happen next. You can pray and ask God to show you what to do. The Bible says you will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. So we can ask God to show us the things that will shortly take place so that we can make decisions that are in line with his plans for us. So that's a powerful God who knows everything and is willing to share that with us. So we are an informed people. Amen. Mm. Yes, indeed. Mm. Powerful, powerful. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, when it comes to, to Cyrus, it's so interesting that uh, Cyrus is called anointed. Uh, and that's, that's a very interesting uh, word to use because the word anointed actually is the same word for Messiah. Mm -hmm. um, and so in Israel, there were two types of people who received this anointing. And one was uh, one group was the priests, and the other one was the kings. You see the anointing of priests in Exodus 28, verse 41, and the anointing of a king in 1 Kings 134. Um, and uh, in addition, prophets were sometimes anointed, as you see happening to Saul in 1 Kings 19, 16. So the Messiah is the anointed per excellence because he is prophet and king and priest all at the same time. And of course, we find we find that uh, in the person of Jesus. Uh, very good. 
So, so much more that could be said. Lots and lots of comments uh, in the chat. Uh, and people are just saying amen and amen. So make sure to go and and read uh, the comments because there's so much there. Okay, very good. So now uh, we're going to get now to the topic, um, the following uh, part of our study, which is uh, dealing more with with Jesus in Isaiah, still not named. It's, it's called the uh, the servant of the Lord. So. A feeling and suffering servant were introduced here in Isaiah chapter 49. And so let's let's read this scripture. Uh, and uh, Marcia, would you read it for us right there sure. on the screen? It is too small a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribe of Jacob and to restore the preserved ones of Israel. I will also give you as a light to the Gentiles that you should be. Oh yes, and you should be, and then it continues right here by ending with, that you should be my salvation to the ends of the, of the earth. Thank you for reading that, Marcia. That's Isaiah 49 and verse six. And so what we find here is that Jesus fulfills the prophecy of Isaiah chapter 49. And, uh, let me let me put on the screen for you to see, um, and just uh, this fulfillment, this fulfillment of this prophecy. All right, so oh, we're, we're going to get to that in a moment. Um, let's see. Oh, that was not okay. Here it is. All right, so. Um, uh, there's justice for the Gentiles. There's silence and meekness all throughout this section of Isaiah. Uh, the covenant the promise between God and his people. And we see how uh, light and hope to heal blind <coughs> and to free prisoners. All these are fulfilled in, uh, uh, in, the, life of, of, uh, in the life of Christ. And so... Um, and so as we uh, look back at Christ's ministry, right up until the very end, uh, didn't he have reasons for discouragement, as, especially as we see the, in Isaiah 53? Yet he stayed faithful despite outward appearances. And so uh, not different from what happens in our lives today. We deal with situations. Um, uh, some of the folks here on the panel are educators, others are uh, in the health field, and in some cases, a combination of the two. And this, this the last year has been a tremendous challenge. And so discouragement has been a very, a very common thing in society with so much grief and so much loss. So I have a question for, I have a question for all of us here right now. Um, and that question is, how, how do you deal with, with discouragement? Um, how did Jesus help you overcome your greatest discouragement? Would you share with us? Well, I'd love to hear your answer in the chat. Um, as, as we listen now to Eve, would you share with us on this particular point? Sure. Um you know, COVID has just been a unpredictable uh, situation. I mean, I don't know about anyone else um, on online or on Facebook, but it kind of popped in on the scene, right? It, we didn't really see it coming. And we've actually had to adjust to life with COVID and life with this disease. Um, it has impacted every uh, area of our lives, from work to family, from visiting, um, just the simple things, going to the grocery store. I remember uh, last night I was going to the drugstore uh, to pick up a couple of items. And, you know, I'm talking on the cell phone with my husband. And as I'm walking into the store, you know, someone's pointing at my face and everyone's looking at me. And I'm like, what's going on? And they're like, where's your mask? And I was like, oh, man, you know, totally forgot that, you know, I was in the car talking and uh, didn't have my mask on. Um, so COVID has really 
uh, impacted every inch of our lives. And we are called by Paul. Um, and Paul is one of my favorite uh, uh, scripture writers. Um, he tells us to walk by faith and not by sight. And so uh, if on the screen, you should actually see a, um, a PowerPoint uh, picture of what it looks like in the cockpit of an airplane. And if uh, Dr. Bell allows me, I'm going to use one of his um, uh, previous scripture, uh, sorry, previous um, stewardship spotlights to kind of talk about how to actually work through uh, discouragement. One of my favorite texts is that uh, David gives us in Psalms 119. Your word, Lord, is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And so as we think about what's out there in the unknown, we are called to trust the word of God and we're called to trust Christ. We are told to walk by faith and not by sight. And I have this photo of what it may look like from a cockpit with clouds below and clouds above. Um, I don't know if you guys have been watching the news lately, but uh, apparently the California, I, I believe California or the, um, uh, the National Aviation uh, Agency released the report of what happened to Kobe Bryant and why his plane went down um, shortly a year ago. And they said that it was pilot error. And the reason why it was pilot error is because uh, the helicopter was actually flying um, in the midst of fog and the uh, pilot did not uh, trust the instruments. So the instruments were reading one thing and the pilot of the helicopter was seeing something else. And uh, I don't know a lot about flying, so I'm allowed Stuart to jump in here. But in times of uncertainty, in times where there's darkness or you may be flying through a storm or you can't see 10 feet in front of you. And there are some situations when we're flying through fog, you know, the pilots actually switch to autopilot. And when uh, the pilots actually switch to auto autopilot, the software and the computer systems inside the plane are taking altitude measurements. They're taking wind shear measurements. They're taking um, um, how fast the plane is going. All of this data is being fed into an algorithm. And that algorithm is informing the pilots as to how high they need to be, whether they need to bank left or bank right. Um, maybe they need to descend a little slower or faster. And all of this is for us as passengers to arrive safely. And so we're on this journey of life and we're on this plane. And we there are things that pop up in our lives unexpectedly. A lot of people, COVID, course for this entire world has popped up unexpectedly. And because of COVID, we've actually have to deal with layoffs. We've had to deal with um, death and sickness. We've had to deal with um, being separated from our loved ones, not being able to travel, um, food insecurity, all of these things we're dealing with um, as a result of this unexpected uh, trial that we're dealing with. And so Paul in the word tells us to walk by faith and not by sight. And for me, that means trust the flight instruments, trust the word of God. And if we don't trust the word of God, it, it may be because we doubt sometimes as Christians, and this happens, we doubt because we don't want to trust uh, our what we don't see. And so it's very important for us that as we continue to go through some of these turbulent times where we, all we can see are clouds around us, that we need to use the word of God that is a lamp. The word of God shines through the clouds and makes the fog disappear. And sometimes we may not trust what the word says. If the word says for us to do something, maybe we need to seek forgiveness or repentance. Maybe we need to get into the word more. One of the things that we're doing in um, our growth group study is actually committing to an hour or so of morning worship. Powerful way to connect with God. 
powerful way to kind of get your instruments in line with God's plan for your life. And so certainly having that um, has allowed me to overcome discouragement and seeds of doubt that have popped up in my life. You cannot go wrong when you trust the word. And so with my uh, 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 spiritual uh, discouragement, sometimes I'm always called to rethink the word. And sometimes having that promise, you know, I will never leave you or forsake you. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. And then even praise, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, uh, praise his holy name. These are the promises that actually helps us to illuminate the path before us because God has promised and Stuart has said so well that he never, God never does something without sharing it with us first. And that is my personal testimony. And please continue to write in your chat and online the way that God has used you and has used um, the word of God and the Bible to illuminate your path and overcome discouragement. Thank you so much for sharing uh, there, Eve, just powerful. Stuart, did you wanna add anything here? Yeah, you know, you, you touched on something I enjoy, which is which is flights. Um, and you make a good point, Eve, which is you have not just one instrument, but you have several instruments mm -hmm. helping you. And for us as, as believers on this path and those who are seeking God and seeking his will, we have more than one instrument. We have his word, we have the Holy Spirit, we have a community of faith, we have this Sabbath school study every Sabbath morning, every Saturday morning. You know, we, we, have, we have different ways that God is using to help us connect with him. So we have several instruments to rely on and a powerful, powerful instrument is his word. And his word is faithful and true. Praise God. Praise God. Do you want to add anything there, Marcia? You can if you want. Yes. Um, the same way we face trial and tribulation, like all Eve saying with this COVID, is and is always stressed it out, you know, with his mercy and his goodness towards us. Mm, amen. Amen. Very good. Let's get in a few comments. Uh, that many comments coming in, um, and uh, let's let's get a few. I won't be able to get them all, but let me just add a few here. Thank you for sharing, and of course, you keep on sharing because people will be able to read it in the chat, and and just typing it into the chat is a blessing to you to be able to say. So here's Dwight Palmer who says, Christ could have given up all um, with all the discomfort he experienced. However, he suffered it all. This was his way to say, trust me, uh, Christ, there is hope in me. That's what the Lord was saying. Thank you for sharing, Dwight. Uh, very, very powerful. Uh, Sister Helen wrote here, as for me, whenever I feel discouragement, I remember the last word that Jesus said on the cross before he died. Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Thank you for sharing so much praise god this has been just incredible a wonderful wonderful experience here today and it looks like we have time to show um this uh powerful powerful quote uh from the book lift him up it's a devotional book and uh let's see uh let's let's share let's share this uh so that you can see it on the screen and we're getting ready to close um, but please keep your thinking hat on. This is some powerful words right here from the book uh, by Ellen White, Lift Him Up. And uh, Stuart, why don't you read it for us? Okay. In the heart of Christ, we reigned perfect harmony with God. There was perfect peace. He was never elated by applause, nor dejected by censure or disappointment. Amid the greatest opposition, and the most cruel treatment, he was still of good courage. When we are born from above, the same mind will be in us that was in Jesus, the mind that led him to humble himself that we might be saved. Mm, thank you so much. Not, uh, he was not dejected by, by censure or disappointment and not elated by applause. Those words 
uh, speak to my heart so well. All right. Well, our time has expired. It's been wonderful. And let's have close in prayer. Stuart, uh, you can close for us, please. Happy to. Let's bow our heads and pray. Father, we thank you for taking time to introduce yourself to us, to tell us who you are, what is true about you, and what is true about us in you. Thank you for saving us. Thank you for making us into something new. Our transformation is not yet complete, but with you, it will be because you are faithful and true. Thank you for your love, your mercies, and your blessings. Bless everyone who's listening, everyone who's watching. Thank you for your promise to come to take us home to be with you soon. We look forward to that day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Everybody, what an incredible promise that just like Jesus lived to serve and to save, so can we in our own sphere by the grace of God. So we're going to go offline for just a few minutes. We'll be back with the worship service. But here is a gift for you right now. If you make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel, if, if that's where you're watching, and if you haven't done so already before, or if you like the Facebook page that we're, that we're on, the church's Facebook page, then tomorrow when we post the reading for next week, then you'll be able to get a notification with a link, a link both to the uh, file where you can read the lesson. Again, it just takes about five minutes. If, if that's all you have, five minutes, you will gain something of nourishment for your soul. Or if you prefer to listen, we will also put the audio of the lesson and that way you can follow with us throughout the week and be ready for next week where, we'll, where we will do another powerful study still in the book of Isaiah. So God bless everybody. Have a great Sabbath. And we'll see you again soon in just a few minutes.